Colonel West has given us three good challenges, and I've, uh, I've taken some notes in my mind. And he's going to come now, and uh, whatever is laid on his heart, because he's a man of courage, he's a man of integrity, he's a man of commitment, and he loves our country. And uh, he loves to ride a motorcycle, so how much better could it get than that? <laughs> Colonel West. Well, I just want to thank you again, Chaplain Shackelford. And, uh, sure. you know, paratroopers don't like too many people to be behind them, okay? These are all Baptists. <laughs> all right, they're, they're Baptists, it's okay. But, uh, and Catholics, and But I want to say thank you so much to each and every one of you all for coming out here because what we are remembering, the people that are in our thoughts and prayers today are that group of individuals that keep us safe each and every day. You know, I had the great opportunity of spending 22 years in the United States Army, deployed 13 different countries, three different combat zones. But the thing is that when I think about the people who made sure that my wife and my two daughters stayed safe while I was out on the outer ramparts, that's what means the most to me. The men and the women who put that badge on, the men and the women of the Fed Blue Line. And today we did. We talked about courage. We talked about commitment. We talked about character. Because that is what they represent. And I think that if we can instill those three simple values once again into the United States of America, to the halls of Congress, a lot of the problems that we see in this country will be resolved. Now this is the true challenge that each and every one of us has from today going forth. You got to ask yourself, what does it mean to be an American? Do you still believe that America is an exceptional nation? Do you still believe that Americans are an exceptional people? Then yeah. that's what you need to start thinking about as we move forward. Because, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we had those brave Navy SEALs. And I got to tell you something. I kind of wish it was Delta Force or the Green Beret. But, but those brave Navy SEALs execute a flawless, Zero illumination, behind enemy lines, commando raid, and they bagged that no good bastard Bin Laden. But it's not over. See, it really concerns me when I listen to a lot of my colleagues on Capitol Hill saying, we cut off the head of the snake, and we can start looking at pulling back. Well, let me tell you what I just got on a BlackBerry alert before we left the last, uh... What's that music? The drum? Oh, man. <laughs> let me tell you about the last alert I just received. The Miami federal agents just picked up six individuals with association to the Pakistan Taliban. Now, what does it take for us in South Florida to remember that 10 years ago, there were individuals who lived right down here in South Florida, in Broward County, who learned how to not take off, not land, but just to fly airplanes. They bought their tickets in Broward County, and the rest is history. It is not over, ladies and gentlemen. And the thing that we must realize is that where we stand right now is part of the battlefield of this 21st century. And these men and women that are wearing the badge that are carrying those sidearms, they're on a new battlefield. And I tell you, hats off to you, because this is not something that you train for, but this is something you have to be prepared for. The challenge is that if each and every one of us want to see this America, want to see this flag flying over this great land, 234 years from now, the challenge is before us to stand with courage, with commitment, with conviction, and with character to make sure that the United States of America, the great constitutional republic that our fathers, grandfathers, mothers, and grandmothers left for us, we leave for those subsequent generations. And I got to tell you, failure is not an option and it's not acceptable. And what we must let everyone know, that it's not just the soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and coast guards, 
It is not just the police officers and the troopers and our federal agents. It's every doggone single one of us that will stand up and say just the same as Leonidas said to the Persians back many years ago when they told him to lay down his weapons. He said in a simple Greek term, Molon lave. You come and get them. If you want the United States of America, I believe that every one of the brothers and sisters that are standing here before me are saying one simple thing. You come and try to get it. Amen. That's, right. That's the challenge that we must man up and woman up to. Because if not, then what will they say about us in the history books in the future? What will our children and grandchildren look back and say about each and every one of us? I say that this is what they will say. That there was a group of Americans that realized in the decisive moment in the history and the evolution of this republic, they made a stand so that we can still have the freedoms and the liberties that a few patriots back in 1776 decided that we should have. And I want to close by reminding you of a simple quote from a gentleman by the name of Thomas Paine. And he said, these are the times which try men's souls. When the summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will in this crisis shrink from their duty. But to he that stands, they shall enjoy the love and admiration of men and women. Join me in standing for the United States of America. God bless you all. Thank you.